Lately, it seems like everybody is taking their own stance on the Israel-Palestine conflict and now South Africa has decided to join in on the action. The country has made a historic move on the international stage by initiating legal proceedings against Israel at the United Nations International Court of Justice ICG. The case revolves around allegations that Israel committed genocide during its military campaign in Gaza. The South African government's decision to pursue legal action against Israel is significant, especially given its own historical struggle against apartheid and advocacy for global justice. The grave accusation of genocide in the context of Israel's military operations in Gaza raises serious questions about the dynamics of regional conflicts and nations' responsibility for their actions on a global scale. This legal initiative also highlights the broader complexities of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, calling into question the international legal framework and the ICG's role in dealing with allegations of serious human rights violations. South Africa's decision to pursue this avenue contributes to the ongoing debate about accountability, justice, and the complexities of Middle Eastern conflicts. The case is expected to be a watershed moment in the debate over the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, with implications for international relations and the global pursuit of human rights and justice. As the case unfolds, it remains to be seen how the international community will respond and whether other nations will take a stance on the matter. What could be the consequences of this case for future attempts to hold countries responsible for their international conduct, and how will the International Court of Justice handle such a complicated issue? Following South Africa's legal action against Israel at the ICJ, Israel vehemently rejects the charges, describing them as a blood libel and urging the ICJ to dismiss the case. South Africa wants a quick resolution and has asked the ICJ to declare a temporary ceasefire in Gaza during the legal process. The urgency stems from a desire to alleviate the ongoing humanitarian crisis and put an end to hostilities, allowing for diplomatic dialogue. However, enforcing ICJ decisions is difficult, as evidenced by Russia's refusal to comply with a similar order in 2022 during the Ukraine conflict. The complex geopolitical dynamics surrounding the Israel-Palestine conflict may make it difficult to ensure compliance with potential ICJ rulings. While ICJ decisions may not result in immediate changes on the ground, they have a significant impact on shaping global perceptions and sparking important discussions about the efficacy of international law and the accountability of nations in conflict zones. As we look into these issues, it is important to note that Article 9 of the Genocide Convention allows any signatory country to bring another nation to the ICJ for allegations of genocide, even if they are not directly involved in the conflict at hand. This means that countries can hold each other accountable for genocide, providing a mechanism for justice beyond direct involvement in the situation. The recent ICJ ruling in the Gambia and Myanmar case sets a significant precedent, affirming the applicability of genocide claims against countries with no direct link to the conflict and demonstrating international law's evolving role in addressing grave human rights violations. This legal recourse adds a complex dimension to the South Africa-Israel case, highlighting the possibility of international accountability even when nations are not directly involved in the conflict. The use of the ICJ as a forum for addressing genocide allegations demonstrates a commitment to global justice, where countries can be held accountable for actions that violate international humanitarian norms, paving the way for a thorough examination of the legal complexities involved in the South Africa-Israel dispute. The case between South Africa and Israel, which is currently being heard by the ICJ, emphasizes the ICJ's critical role in addressing and adjudicating genocide claims worldwide. As demonstrated in previous landmark cases, such as the Croatia-Serbia dispute, the ICJ is committed to a broad interpretation of genocidal acts. In this context, the court ruled that actions that go beyond direct physical harm, such as deprivation of basic necessities like food, shelter, and medical care, can be considered genocidal. This broad interpretation reflects the ICJ's commitment to fully assessing the impact on the survival and well-being of targeted groups, resulting in a more nuanced understanding of genocidal acts and their consequences. The implications of the ICJ's decisions go beyond the immediate cases at hand, 
influencing global legal perspectives on genocide and establishing precedents that shape the interpretation of international humanitarian law. The ongoing South Africa-Israel case thus becomes a critical juncture for further clarifying the parameters of genocidal acts and establishing the ICG's stance on actions that jeopardize the basic needs and survival of target populations. The International Criminal Court ICC, is currently looking into potential war crimes and crimes against humanity committed by Hamas and Israel. The International Criminal Court prosecutes individuals for their roles in alleged crimes committed during the conflict, focusing on personal accountability rather than targeting entire states. In contrast, the ICJ serves as a forum for resolving interstate disputes. Unlike the ICC's individual-oriented approach, the ICJ resolves disputes at the state level. Its role entails assessing claims and counterclaims made by nations with the goal of issuing legal judgments to resolve conflicts. How does the distinction between the ICG's state-level resolution and the ICC's individual emphasis help to address the complex dynamics of state-to-state -state conflicts more thoroughly and comprehensively? The ICC's emphasis on personal accountability enables the prosecution of specific individuals responsible for crimes, whereas the ICG's state-level resolution addresses broader issues and aims to establish a legal framework for resolving international conflicts. What exactly is South Africa's argument? South Africa, in its 84-page submission, claims that Israel's actions are genocidal because they are allegedly intended to destroy a significant portion of the Palestinian population in Gaza. South Africa wants the International Court of Justice to issue official, binding statements about Israel's violations of international genocide laws. The request includes halting military operations in Gaza, compensating for damages, and assisting in the reconstruction of Gaza. South Africa is essentially asking the International Court of Justice to hold Israel accountable for its actions and to ensure that measures are taken to address the conflict's consequences. South Africa's submission to the International Court of Justice ICG, argues that Israel's actions extend beyond military operations. It claims that the ICG's actions are more than just military and that Israel is complicit in a number of harmful actions, including the deliberate creation of conditions designed to destroy the Palestinian group and the eradication of Palestinians, as well as serious physical and psychological injury. Many people have asked why South Africa considers these activities to be acts of genocide. According to South Africa, statements made by Israeli officials support the notion that there is a deliberate effort to physically destroy a significant portion of the Palestinian population. How do these statements help South Africa's case? South Africa claims that the ICG has the authority to handle this case because both Israel and South Africa are signatories to the Genocide Convention. By referring to Article 9 of the Genocide Convention, South Africa emphasizes the international commitment to holding countries accountable for genocide. Many South Africans, including President Cyril Ramaphosa, compare Israel's treatment of Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank to how South Africa enforced racial segregation under apartheid. They recognize similarities in how certain groups are treated differently. But how has Israel responded? The Israeli government quickly dismissed South Africa's claim of genocide. Israel's foreign ministry issued a statement arguing that South Africa's case lacks a proper legal foundation. According to Israel, the accusations constitute a despicable and contemptuous exploitation of the court. Alon Levy, an Israeli prime minister's office official, accused South Africa of providing political and legal support for Hamas' October 7th attack, which prompted Israel's military campaign. However, Levy confirmed that Israel intends to send a legal team to The Hague to refute what he calls South Africa's absurd blood libel. On the other hand, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has pledged to continue the military campaign until Hamas is decisively defeated. What will happen next? South Africa's submission to the court includes a request for urgent and legally binding interim orders directing Israel to immediately halt its military operations in and against Gaza. The requested orders, known as provisional measures, would remain in effect throughout the legal proceedings. The next steps in the legal process include public hearings where lawyers from South Africa and Israel will present their arguments.
Judges from around the world will listen before making a decision on the preliminary measures requested by South Africa, which could take days or weeks. These measures will remain in place while the case is ongoing. The court's handling of this process will have an impact on the case's outcome and implications for both countries. Meanwhile, the Israeli military has announced the withdrawal of thousands of troops from the Gaza Strip. This significant shift suggests a possible transition to a new phase of the process, characterized by low-intensity conflict with the Hamas militant group. The troop withdrawal could mark a shift from the recent intense military engagement to a period of reduced hostility. The development opens up possibilities for diplomatic initiatives and negotiations, paving the way for discussions aimed at finding a more long-term and stable solution to the region's ongoing tensions. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict's future course will be largely determined by how both parties handle this shifting scenario, which is still unstable. The Israeli military's announcement about reducing troops happened on the same day that Israel's Supreme Court rejected a significant part of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's plan to change the judicial system. Even though this plan isn't directly linked to the ongoing war, it has been a big source of disagreement within Israel. Before the Hamas attack on October 7 that started the current conflict, there were worries that the plan could affect the military's readiness. The Israeli army recently announced a planned withdrawal of five brigades, totaling several thousand troops, from the Gaza Strip in the coming weeks. This move represents a significant reduction in the military presence in the region. While some troops will return for additional training or rest, older reservists will be allowed to leave. The decision may be influenced by operational requirements, changing dynamics, or diplomatic considerations, but it is not explicitly labeled as a new phase in the ongoing conflict. This is consistent with Israel's strategy of a long-term low-intensity campaign aimed at Hamas strongholds and pockets of resistance. Ongoing clashes continue, especially in southern Gaza, where formidable Hamas forces remain. Thank you for watching our video. Do you know about South Africa suing Israel for genocide? Share your thoughts with us in the description below.